I'm Robert Ellis. It, did, it took about a year to make the record, and some of the songs are older than that, a couple years old. Um, and they're all very personal. Uh, I think the main thing that I'm really excited about is just uh, how happy I am with the uh, end product. The whole thing is, it's kind of special that I was able to do it the way that we did it, um, you know, being on a record label and all that kind of thing. We were able to kind of come to some compromises that I think made the record really nice. Like the front cover is my parents. Um, all of the pictures inside of the record are family pictures, old family photos. Um, so it was a very personal thing, which I know doesn't happen a whole lot, especially when you've got multiple parties working together. Um, but New West is super accommodating as far as the art goes. So I'm really excited about putting that out and uh, kind of sharing that with people. It's a very, very personal thing. And uh, I think it says a lot about me and where I come from and that sort of stuff. So um, it's always kind of a weird decision on how much to give away and how much, you know, because those are the songs are all about people that are still around me and close to me. And it doesn't take long for somebody to be like, hey, wait a minute, that song's about me. And it's a little bit slanted, uh, <laughs> you know, and maybe not a, a totally great light. Um, but I, I try to be honest at the same time, not be, you know, a jerk to anybody. I could tell my parents were a little shaky about the photos being on the front of the record because I asked them and they were both like, oh, yeah, fine. And I don't think they realized necessarily, like, what the reach of the record might be. Because my last record I put out by myself, and, you know, I sold it at shows, and a couple record stores had it in Houston, but it definitely wasn't this kind of thing. Um, so I think my mom especially seemed a little bit freaked out last time I talked to her. <laughs> she was like, well, if you want me on it, you know, I'm happy about it. But, yeah, I'm sure it's a, it's a little exposing to let people into that part of your life, you know. Or to have your family, your son, let people into that part of your life, <laughs> you know, for them. I think of this record as a, a more, more focused uh, record, but in the same direction as the first record in some ways. I felt like when I did that record, I was developing, you know, a style and developing what I wanted to do. And uh, being, doing it all myself also helped me kind of see some of the more business uh, aspects of things like actually putting together a record and trying to be really conscious about artwork and and all of those things that I now I'm really glad I've done and I want to continue to do in those ways but um, I think that every aspect of it is just like a more focused uh, more focused thing in that same direction you know when I look back at that old record it's not I don't not like it but I there's definitely some parts of it that are a little green that uh, I I kind of cringe when I listen to you know <laughs> Um, and I hope that won't be the case with this one. Who knows? Two years down the road, I might listen to that, this and think the same thing. But um, it's a little tricky because it's kind of a concept record. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't know if, if you know about the, the whole thing, but it's, it's cut in half. The A side of the record is like folky, dark, you know, acoustic songs. And the B side of the record is very much classic country inspired stuff. And so, I, and I'm really happy with it, but as a debut record, I would imagine it's a little confusing for people to hear it, to figure out what it is that they're listening to, I guess, and to figure out what to expect from the next record. I'm sure there are a lot of people that'll be disappointed when I don't do another country record, you know, next, or vice versa. You know, whatever I do, it's it's a little bit tricky. It's not a, it's not a very telling record. Um, but then again, I think the style thing is kind of irrelevant um, to the songwriting. I think that's the most important thing. Paul Simon is a good example of somebody who just writes great songs, and no matter how they're arranged or doctored, it's still Paul Simon, and he's still writing great songs, you know. We had this country band. We were playing a lot of shows, doing classic country stuff. And I had written some of the A-side songs, written a couple of the A-side songs, but I really, it wasn't that long after I had released the other record, and I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. Um, but I did know that I wanted to somehow showcase the band, but I still wanted to be able to do the Mad Scientist minimal thing that I did with my last record so um, before I had most of the songs written that kind of became clear that I wanted to do a split thing and uh, once that happened the writing came a lot easier especially the b-side stuff when I started keeping that in mind I, some of the songs started kind of writing themselves knowing that they were going to fit into that that sort of mold I want the next record to be a lot less stylized in one way if that makes any sense I uh 
I really, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the record, this new one. Um, but with the one after this, I want to be very careful to not, uh, you know, as far as a genre, I don't, I don't want it to be easily classified as a genre, especially country. Um, not to say that we won't do another country record. We've talked about doing like a George Jones tribute record or just doing a bunch of honky tonk songs. And I still write a bunch of those tunes, but um, as far as what I put out, I, I just want it to be very much uh, kind of my own thing that, uh, that people can hear and, and know as me immediately. I really love doing this. It's <laughs> probably one of the big things. Some of these, uh, some of these things are not as glamorous as they might seem, like playing shows and touring, and I, sometimes I have to remind myself this is what I want to be doing. I really love doing this, and that's become increasingly clear as I've been out of town, and I, I have a wife back at home, and um, it's, it's made me kind of put things into perspective that this is all I really want to be doing, and that uh, it's all I'm going to be able to do for a while, you know. Um, coming to terms with that is something that I had never really done in this way. I had always kind of wanted a tour, but uh, there are aspects of it that I don't think I was necessarily prepared for, um, that or I'm getting better at, you know. Touring's really great still. I love it. You know, I like, like waking up in different places and uh, meeting people and all that stuff, and I love playing music. Uh, but knowing that I have a family at home makes it a little bit di more difficult, you know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Don't know. I don't think she has either. Um, but we're kind of going to naturally, you know, happen in the way that it should and, and just figure out what we need from each other, I'm sure, to make it continue to work as we go. Um, like I said, this is all still fairly new, so we're figuring that out, you know, right now. But she's she's a really, really cool girl, and I think it's going to, I mean, I know it's going to work out, but I think it's going to be a lot easier than it otherwise might have been. This one was mainly just to come see Portland, and because the offer came, and I've never been here, and it seems, you know, I, I figured I would like the town. But I, I like the idea of uh, one not having to, you know, pay for gas to go from town to town every night. It's a lot easier to go to one place and play, you know, over and over, and not really spend much money while you're there. And then when you leave, you, you know, made a lot more. It makes it a lot easier to live, you know, on the road. And I notice a lot of bigger bands are doing that now. They're playing two nights in one city and then traveling rather than one, just because it's it's really hard to make enough to cover all your expenses and you know hopefully bring home a little money. So that's that's one aspect of it. Another is people don't really know who I am, you know, especially out here. I've never played here, so um, it's a lot easier to build kind of a fan base if people have the opportunity to keep coming to shows like the people that see me the first and second night can bring friends on Friday and Saturday and uh, you know hopefully I can build up a crowd whereas if I came here once every three months that might take me years to do in the same way you know people don't really know what to expect especially here people just kind of know that there's music so they come in because they like music I guess you know in a vague sense and they like the venue so you definitely have to win them over um, I definitely have gotten some walk-in, walk-out characters, but that happens, you know. I do live in Houston, so I, I would imagine to um, the rest of the world some of the some of the stuff is outlandish, but some of just the normal stuff might seem a little bit outlandish. Um, but you got to keep in mind, a lot of the folks in Houston just they wear boots. <laughs> they wear cowboy boots, and not because it's uh, you know. Uh, a hipster thing but because it's you know every that's what everyone wears so it's that part of it is is really natural um but i also and think all the guys in the band also feel the same way about especially that buck owens era stuff of the really flashy awesome country western outfits um we all really like to you know dress nice put on bolo ties and and nice shirts and play shows it's it's kind of a fun thing song she used to sing to me all at home and when the music stopped by moaning I was gone now those songs escape my ear but to you they ring clear over that western trainer he passed me by and I'm 